I am Anil Kumar. Welcome to my YouTube channel and the website globalmapinstitute.com. In this video, we'll begin with understanding of some algebraic techniques. One of the most important techniques is to prove a statement. Now, this proof can be done in many different ways. In this video, we are going to understand the concept of proving a statement using contradiction. Well, if the statement is true and you have to prove that it is true, the method of contradiction really works. The algorithm to prove is very simple. Assume that the statement is incorrect. So, the assumption will be given statement is incorrect and therefore the statement which is negation of that is correct. And now we will follow some logical steps to prove that this assumption is wrong. Well, we can only say that this assumption is wrong if it leads to a contradiction or something which is not acceptable or which is impossible in mathematics. Let us see, how do we prove that square root of 2 is not a rational number? We will follow the logic to help you understand the process. I hope you find it interesting. Let us see the proof. Now here is a very important question from test point of view. We are going to use the algebraic method to prove by contradiction. The question is, prove square root 2 is not a rational number. Now, this statement is true. We need to prove this statement is true. One of the best ways to prove it is to use the method of contradiction. So, make a note. Whenever we have to prove a statement to be correct, in that case, method of contradiction is one of the best. How do we apply this particular method? This is what we are going to learn here in this video. Now the process is, we assume that this statement is not correct and therefore the negative should be correct. So we assume that the negative is correct. Now, this step is called negation of the statement. So, the negation of this statement will be what? We need to prove square root 2 is not a rational number. Negation will be it is a rational number. Correct. So, that is easy. So, we know first thing. So, we have a negative statement. We call it a negation. And that is that square root 2 is a rational number. The whole idea is, if I prove that this is wrong, in that case, our statement Our original statement is correct. Do you understand the policy behind it? So, first we say let our statement be incorrect and therefore its negation will be correct. But then logically we are going to prove that that negation is wrong and therefore the statement should be correct. So, this is the process being followed. It is easy to say, but it is very difficult to apply this strategy. And we are going to learn this technique here with the example to prove square root 2 is not a rational number. Now, before getting into the details of this, let us once again 
go through the process of contradiction. So the method of contradiction basically involves these steps. To prove a statement by contradiction, you start by assumption or assuming it is not true. Write a negative statement for doing so. Then use logical steps to show that this assumption leads to something impossible. When I say impossible, it really means either a contradiction of the assumption itself or the contradiction of a fact. Then you can conclude that the assumption was wrong and so the original statement was true. Is that clear to you? So that is the method of contradiction which we are going to apply. As I said, writing a negative statement is not difficult. It says proof square root 2 is not a rational number. So the negative statement will be let square root 2 be a rational number. Correct? Now, many students do not really have the concept of what a rational number is and what is not a rational number. So we'll understand this first and then get into the method of contradiction. Okay? So let us first understand what is a rational number. Rational numbers can be written as p over q, where of course q is not equal to 0, since you cannot divide by 0. And another very important property is that the greatest common factor between p and q is 1. That means they are co-prime. So what we are trying to say is that we are writing a number in the form of p over q where q is not equal to 0 and they are co-prime. There is nothing, no factor common between them except one of course. Now this particular statement will help us lead to something which is contradictory. So that's a hint for you. Okay, so what are rational numbers? Let's have some examples. All terminating decimal numbers are rational numbers as they can be written in the form of P over Q. All numbers with repeating or recurring decimals are rational numbers. They can also be written as P over Q. For example, if I have 1.3, it's a decimal number, then I can write this as 13 over 10, a form of P over Q, right? 1.25 means 125 divided by 100 simplifies to 5 over 4, which is kind of the simplest form of this rational number. If I have repeating decimals, 1.6666, it can be written as 4 over 3. And this repeating decimals can be also written with bar notation, 0 0.5 recurring. It is equal to 5 over 9. So we have written all these decimal numbers in the form of P over Q, where between P and Q, there is no common factor except 1. You get the idea. So rational numbers can be written as simple fractions where there is no common factor between numerator and denominator. So this is the concept, okay? So what are irrational numbers? Well, irrational numbers are real numbers that are not rational, perfect. That means you cannot write them in the form of P over Q. You get the idea? where p and q do not have any common factor. That is what irrational numbers are. To give you some examples which are very popular, the value of pi is irrational number, pi equals to 3.14159265454 and so on. Nothing repeats here, nor is it terminating, right? So it kind of continues with some other numbers. The value of e 2.71828182828 and so on is also an irrational number. And then many radicals 
are all irrational numbers. So irrational numbers are real numbers which cannot be expressed as a fraction in simple form. You get the idea. So that is what irrational number is. Now let's look into our proof. So we are saying we need to prove square root of 2 is not a rational number. So first thing is we'll assume that square root of 2 is a rational number. So that is the negation, right? So, now we need to show that this statement is incorrect. How do we do so? So, now, if square root 2 is a rational number, that means I could write square root of 2 in the form of p over q, where q is not equal to 0. Clear? And the greatest common factor between p and q is only one, nothing else. I mean, co-prime numbers. Is that clear to you? Okay. Now, let's do something. Let's square both sides. So, if I square both sides, what happens? So, in that case, I get 2 equals 2 p square over q square. Perfect. Okay. So, that means 2 q square is equal to p square. 2 times any number is even, right? So, this implies that p is even. Now, since p is even, I can write p as 2 times some number. So, let p equals to 2 times, let's say k. Right. So, rewriting with p as 2k, we get 2q square equals to 2k whole square. So, that gives us that 2q square is equals to 4k square. Now, we can divide by 2. So, we get q square equals to 2k square. And that means what? Since q square is 2 times some number, that means q is even. Is that clear to you? So, what are we saying? We are saying q is even. We are saying p is even. Both are even, right? So, we are saying both p and q are even. If we assume that square root of 2 is a rational number. Now, so that is contrary, right? Because the greatest common factor between P and Q is equal to 1. In this case, it is higher. At least 2. Do you see the contradiction? So, we have shown that this particular assumption that square root of 2 is a rational number is not true. Since the statement is not true, the original statement is true. You get the idea. That is how we are going to prove it. Now, here is a neat solution for you. The problem given to us was to prove that square root 2 is not a rational number. We assume the statement is wrong and negative statement is correct. And therefore, let square root of 2 be a rational number. Then, p by q is equal to square root of 2 where the greatest common factor between p and q is 1. Now, p by q equals to square root of 2. We can square both the numbers, right? So, when we square, we get p square over q square equals to 2. Cross multiply. p square is 2q square. That means p is even. The only way it can be even is when p is also even, right? So, p square is even. So, that is also important. p square is even. That means p is even. 
So only way that p square is even is when p is also even. Now this statement is another very important statement. Perfect. And this can also be proven by contradiction. So let this be an exercise for you, right? So let this be an exercise for you. Practice test question. Is that clear to you? So practice test question is, if p square is even, then p is also even. Okay. So now, let p be equals to 2r in this case. Then, replacing p with 2r, we get 2r square equals to 2q square. 4r square is 2q square. 2r square is q square. That means q square is also even. q square being even means that q is also even. So we have shown that both p and q are even. Since both p and q are even, the greatest common factor between p and q is not 1, right? That contradicts the assumption. And so, from the contradiction, we prove that square root of 2 be a rational number. So square root of 2 is a rational number. Is that clear? Perfect. So that is how we prove it. So remember, for rational numbers can be written in this form where there is no common factor between P and Q except for 1. Here, we have a common factor of at least 2 and therefore this assumption is wrong. Since this assumption is wrong, we have proven the statement is correct. Perfect. So I hope you have understood the process. Go through this and if case, in case there are any doubts, you can always share them with me or write comments at the end of this video. Thanks for your time and all the best. So with this example, I hope you have understood how do we use the method of contradiction to prove that a statement is correct. Now, you can try some questions from your textbook. In case there is any difficulty, feel free to send an email to me or comments on this particular video. Thanks for your time and all the best.